you ever feel that YouTube guides aren't in depth enough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution for you and it is GameLeap. GameLeap is an educational video platform that helps you get the most out of Dota. Each hero is cleverly devised into special courses with lots of videos which help you master all the finer points of how to play a player really well. And it's done by 7K plus MMR players. And don't forget, if you sign up for GameLeap, not only does it help you win more and get your MMR up, it also supports my channel. Hello guys, this is ZXYC here and today we're going to be talking about the early game for Skywrath Mage. So as you guys already know, Skywrath Mage is one of the strongest zoners in the game. So what you will be doing at level 1 is zoning out a hero, whether it's off lane or mid. You're going to choose what lane to zone out based on your hero's needs. So if your mid really needs help at level 1, if it's a hero that's not too strong at level 1 and needs big mismatch, then go mid and zone them out, right? Just spamming Q, attacking them, spamming Q, giving them enough space to farm that first wave. Something like an SF especially. SF just needs his souls at the early. On that first wave, he has really low base damage, and if you just help him just get those first few uh, last hits, then leave the lane, you'll end up helping him snowball into a really good lane. A hero like SF against TA, for example, just a really high base damage hero that's not fun to play against. You can go mid, just hit her, hit her, hit her, spam your Q, zone her out. Here you will be stealing XP, remember that? But SF shouldn't care for one wave where he steals his XP because he's going to be gaining a lot of damage. If he's denying and last hitting everything, he's going to gain a lot of souls and be able to actually keep up with the TA. So if the mid is like that, go mid. Other than that, you'll want to probably zone out the offlaner and keep them level 1. Depending on the offlaner, if it's like a hero that can't jungle, if it's a hero like Clockwork who's just not really good at jungling, you're gonna really ruin their game by just zoning them out and keeping them level 1 because he's so level dependent, but he can't really do anything if you continuously keep him off XP range. Other heroes can jungle, of course, like if it's an axe, he could just leave the lane or not even lane in the first place. So when playing off lane, if you can zone, other than that you'll be stacking, pulling and farming. If they're jungling, just be careful, don't run around chasing them too much because you are level dependent as well. So the furthest you can go in terms of chasing, the camps that are beside their shrine, the one with the boundary rune in between, they're going to be farming that, which is close to the lane. Generally speaking, what you should do is just stack pull and just focus on your own farm if they're not laning, right? Because at that point, they're not a threat to anyone. They're going to be gaining their levels, yes, but not as fast as a lane is number one. And number two, you can have two heroes farming now, and they only have that guy farming in this lane. You're going to be farming the stacks, pulls, getting XP, gold, while your short lane's farming the lane and, you know, the stacks and pulls with you. So, you guys have two heroes farming, which is so much better. If you go and chase them, then you only have one hero farming, which is just your short lane, and then you're trying to kind of stop the offlaner's farm. Best case scenario is you push them out of that area into the deeper jungle, which is good because now they can't come back to the lane when it's pushing, which is pretty important, but you can still zone them when they're pushing. So, realistically, what I'm trying to say is once you push a hero off the lane, the easiest thing to do is to just stack pull and get your own farm. It gets too complicated if you start chasing them down, because then you won't know if you're doing it right or wrong. And it's better to just sit in the lane and just get the, the XP and the gold, because that's guaranteed. So take the 100% guaranteed play over the risky chase them down play. So what I would recommend if you're zoned out, stack pull. If they're not zoned out, I mean, you're doing so much damage that they're going to have to come with a lot of region for a Skyrath Mage to not zone them out, if they're alone, of course. Most of the time, they will not be able to lane, or they'll be level 1. Either way, you're doing a good job. If you're level 1 and they're level 1, that's fine, because your short lane's farming. If they leave the jungle, you stack, pull, farm yourself. You're both farming. If it's a dual lane, you might need help, because your hero is like really good at hitting one person, not so good at dealing with two. So you might ask your other support to come and help you. But you can see in all these situations, you're in the short lane. Like getting your levels, getting your farm, because that's what the hero wants to do, he wants his levels, especially those early levels, I mean you can't really do much. You can zone mid, yes, but don't stay there too long, same thing, you lose a lot of levels, you lose your farm, and you are a hero that shines so well with levels, like just with a few levels you can snowball so hard. You stay in your lane, you hit a few levels, maybe when you're 3 or 4, you can actually start ganking other lane. So when it comes to ganking mid, make sure you go with your other support, because you yourself don't have a stun. Your W is a 30% slow for 4 seconds, not too bad, but not the best either. So if the mid laner is a high kill potential hero, sure you guys together can maybe get a kill. But other than that, you probably want to smoke with your other support, and then secure kill on mid. 
when it comes to ganking the offlane. It depends on what heroes are there, but generally speaking, you will want to have them hit level 6. Because once they hit level 6, a lot of these offlane heroes right now have such high kill potential once they hit 6. Centaur gets a Stampede, Nyx gets Vendetta, Clockwork gets Hook. Like you can see a lot of these heroes, once they hit 6, even LC gets dual, you'll have such a high kill potential that even though you're level 3 or 4, just with your slow or with their ability, you can very easily get on top of a hero and end up killing them. So for you, in the early game, you're going to be focusing on zoning level 1, hitting either mid or short, and then going and stacking and pulling and farming and getting your stuff. When you're 3 or 4, maybe your offlaner might be 6 at this point, try to get a secure kill whenever you can, especially when you're like level 3 or 4, try to gank mid with your other support. That's pretty much how it should be. You're focusing on your farm, and then whenever you see an opportunity to go for it, then you go back and focus on your farm. Make sure you're always picking up the bounty runes. Those bounty runes are really important for you, that extra gold and XP is really nice. Pick up the close one. This is like the safe one because you're really fragile. You can go to the enemy bounty room, like the one near their shrine, like the off lanes of jungle area. Just be careful because the only reason you can go there is because of just how fast you are with the high base movement speed. And with your base movement speed, you'll be running at like 375. So you'll be very fast. And that's usually enough to outrun most heroes. You can go for those banner runes, but just be careful again. You have no escape outside of just the fact that you're faster than most heroes. You have a slow, of course, but that's usually not enough if they catch you. So be careful when actually trying to take enemy boundary. So I would say like 70% of the early game, you're going to be focused on short lane. And then the rest of the time, you'll be doing other stuff, whether it's, you know, ganking mid, ganking off lane, picking up boundary runes, whatever it is. That just takes less time. Once you hit 6, your 6 isn't like an objective 6, the way a warlock like hits 6 and just wants to start taking towers and he wants to get his ultimate off. Like Warlock wants to use his ultimate as soon as he hits 6 to get that cooldown going, to get all that gold out of it, to get a tower, objective, etc. Your 6 isn't really like that. It's more of like a pick off or ganking 6. So if you have a hero like Clockwork, really really good hero to gank with, he'll hook, cogs, you just ulti and silence on top. Pretty much secure kill on almost any hero in the game at that point. And most heroes don't have a good save that early, except for like specific supports. Even if Venge swaps, She's still in the cogs, at least you're gonna kill a support, right? Short lane that you went on, for example, the core, might still be too low to help. So, it's not the worst. Uh, pretty much what I'm trying to say is once you hit 6, focus on getting kills. Like, especially high impact kills, like important kills. If you could kill their cores. So what I mean by core is short lane, mid, off lane. Those three are the cores. If you could kill any of them, you're happy. Killing a support is fine. It's pretty much slowing them down and speeding you up, right? But killing a core is a huge, huge, huge impact on the game. Killing a few cores can actually just simply snowball into a win, that's it. Like, you just need to get a few of those kills, slow down their game well enough, and your cores aren't dying, you'll end up just winning right there. So, when you hit 6, pretty much you want to use it to get a kill. And, of course, since you can't do it alone, you'll always want to be with a hero on your team that sets you up. So, when it comes to playing Skywrath, when you hit 6, you have to look at your team and be like, Hmm, who do I want to be with? Every time my ultimate's up, who do I want to be with? Oh, I have a clockwork, I want to be with him. Oh, I have a set stun, oh, I want to be with him. Right? So you have to think about who you want to be with, and you two are going to be, like, paired together. And you two are going to be running around together, doing stuff together. When running around together is two, remember, you're only two. So don't run into five. Like, that's just map awareness at this point. That's just generic Dota. Whenever you guys are running around as two, what are you looking for? You're looking for little skirmishes against a hero or two, right? Like, you know what, more than that. So, if you're running into five constantly and feeding, of course, then just slow it down. Because that means that they're just sticking together. And if they're sticking together, they're not farming the whole map the way your team is. So, when, when the game starts to not go your way, just slow it down and realize why it's not going your way. Most likely, if it's working, it will work really well. Like you and Clockwork running around together, killing people, you'll get so many kills, you just snowball into a good mid-game, just win the game by yourselves. If it's not working, which means they're probably either stacking up more, like they're 5-manning, then just your whole team's farming the whole map. Especially if they're 5-manning in their own jungle or something useless like that. Of course, if they're walking down the lane, you'll see them, and you won't even try to uh, like pick them off, per se. To summarize the early game, you're going to be zoning out at level 1, whether it's mid or off lane. Don't stay, don't linger too much on mid. You could come at level 1, cast a few spells, hit a few, just get that early lead for your mid in the first wave, then just leave. When it comes to zoning in the off lane, make sure you're just denying them XP and then start focusing on your own game. So stack, pull, etc. Just focus on your own game, uh, getting your levels. When you're like 3 or 4, maybe your off lane is 6, 
you guys can go and gank for him. With 6, there's a lot of abilities that end up securing good kills. You can also smoke gank with your so other support, ganking either offlane or the mid, or even like running around, wrapping around and ganking the offlaner. So you guys can do what you want. Pick up your boundary runes. Make sure you're always still doing something, because your hero's really fast, you can always just move around the map and do stuff. When it comes to carrying TPs and counter ganking, of course your hero's not the best. What you do have is a silence, but most of the time they'll end up already have casted their spells. So your hero's not the best in terms of TPing in and stopping a gank, but you can do a lot of damage. So you can still dish out a lot of damage, and of course, silence a hero that didn't cast their spells yet. So, just playing general, like, good Dota. Uh, when it comes to you hitting 6, Pair up with heroes that have really high kill potential with you and go together and secure kills. Choose your targets wisely. The cores, of course, are the higher impact, but if you find the support, don't hesitate to go on them and kill them. It just slows their farm down and slows their game down while it speeds yours up. Remember, your ultimate has a pretty short cooldown. It's one minute at level one, so don't hesitate to use it, then just go hit base. Once you use it, you're gonna go hit base because nothing will heal you that much mana. Then you'll come back and by that time, maybe it's up again. So as always, thanks for watching, please leave a comment below. In our next video, we're going to talk about the mid and late game for Skywrath Mage.